So the epoxy in our coasters has had enough time to dry and it turned out looking pretty good actually. Uh, we did have some get to the front, which uh, on this one isn't an issue, but uh, this one a lot got onto the front. And the reason why it's gonna be an issue is on the others, it just kind of glossed it. And when I pour the epoxy onto the the front uh, it's gonna cover up and those blotches will disappear but on this one enough got to the front to where if I do a pour and I don't coat this well enough that blotch is still gonna come through so I'm just gonna sand it uh, off a little bit and then same with the sides this one got a lot on the sides but for the most part these dark marks are gonna get covered up when the epoxy goes around the sides um, so the biggest difference for this time is uh, we really want to get these coasters level and that's going to be the determining factor to whether or not we can get away with just one coat or two coats. If the coasters aren't level uh, when doing the front then you might have a high side low side and for these letters it's going to uh, form ridges where the letters are. If uh, this is a high side and let's say that's a low side then this uh, the low side will be nice and flat and smooth but because it's self-leveling the epoxy is going to roll down and not uh, have an even coat so we really need to make sure we get this level so to do the sanding process we're going back to the palm sander and you might be wondering why i keep going back to the palm sander when i have a belt sander that can do the job much faster and the reason for that is, is the fact that the belt sander has an 80 grit sandpaper and moves much faster than the palm sander does. And if I angle it wrong or accidentally drop a piece, then I might lose the entire coaster. So I'd rather take, you know, the few extra minutes to palm sand, you know, if that, uh, and make sure that I don't ruin the piece. So I'm just gonna hit them all really quick uh, because it's not going to take that much more time. So last time when I did the backs of the coasters, I was just using a scrap piece of plywood uh, to let the coasters rest on. And the reason why I did that was because I didn't care if a little bit got on the edges and a little bit got on the plywood because it wasn't going to build up on the sides. Uh, when we're doing the front, we really don't want that build up to occur. So this time I'm going to be using uh, some dowels that I got for another project but I really don't want these to get ruined with the epoxy. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna tape them up with a little bit of packing tape. And that way, when we're done with the project, we could just peel away the packing tape, remove, and that'll remove any epoxy that might've got on the dowel, and we can use this for a future project. So like I said, I want to make sure that this is level. And if you could see, the bubble is all the way to the right. So we need to raise this side up to make sure that the epoxy pours evenly. I don't have any shims at the moment, so we're just going to use some of these mixing sticks. And hopefully that doesn't roll over. Pretty good going this way, so now we'll just check. And I don't know if you could see that, but the bubble is almost in between the lines going this way. And if these two directions are level, then we should be good. So now I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before in mixing the epoxy, one part of each. Uh, this time I'm probably gonna mix uh, two ounces in each cup 
even though it only took uh, half an ounce to cover the backs of all of them, because there's a lot of missing space and we actually want a thick layer this time uh, to come above the surface, we're gonna need a lot more. And this really needs to be done, or I really would like this to be done in one pour. So this is definitely the time you want extra epoxy. Just to go ahead and apply it. Same as before, we're gonna put an equal size glob on each of them. That way we don't accidentally run out before we get to the last one. And this time I'm not gonna scrape anything away. I'm just gonna let everything run off the sides to avoid getting an uneven coat. For design like this one, you wanna make sure you go along uh, the cut because it's thick enough and yet thin enough to where the epoxy will just rest on a bubble instead of actually filling in all the voids. So now that I believe I have everything coated, I'm gonna run the heat gun over it. And I'm sure we're gonna see some bubbles pop and then there'll be some low spots that will need to be filled. And I have about a half an ounce left, which should hopefully be enough to give us an even coat. All right. Looks like I just need a little bit right there. The center of the R didn't quite get filled. And it wouldn't actually be a bad idea to have a needle or something. Cause I don't know if this will actually get in there or not. So I just want to give you a quick close-up view of how the epoxy is just rolling off the sides of the dowels. And you can tell if this was just a flat surface, that uh, epoxy would have nowhere to go and it would just start building up on the sides and then I would have an uneven uh, finish on the sides. And like I said, I don't want to have to sand and then do another coat. So having the dowels is a great way to avoid that. <laughs> 